Good morning and welcome to today's first session of the day. And I hope that you really enjoyed the one that you had just before me. We're going to talk a little bit about some of those things. But before I dive into my presentation on an evidence-based framework for building robust online learning programs, I want to talk to you a little bit about why I thought this was an important session for today and why digital pedagogies is so important to the University of the West Indies. UWE is one of only two regional universities in the world and it has five campuses as well as several sites spread over 18 countries and territories in the Caribbean region, as you can see on the map. Our campuses and sites are located in various small island states, which presents some unique administrative challenges, but also some unique opportunities to bring the region together. The open campus is at the forefront of our online course delivery, and by the end of the conference, you would have heard from some of its very talented staff. But given the need for higher education in our region and the dearth of financial resources, to replicate teaching and learning structures for future students in every island, digital pedagogies, including online learning, is one mechanism for us to sustainably prepare our people to face the future. The Sustainable Gold Development Goal SDG 4 is the one that we are looking at to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. This is what we're trying to do. So now that you have a little bit of an understanding of our office, which is the Office of Online Learning, and these are the things that we do. Not all of the things we do, but some of them. I'm not going to read them all to you because you can read faster than I can talk, but I want you to understand that we are looking to promote and achieve SDG 4 in our work. So now you have a little better understanding of the Office of Online Learning. We're going to take a look at the framework. This framework that I'm going to show you next was birthed out of my thesis research several years ago and has been expanded through the literature and my understanding of online learning and my experiences. And as you can see, the framework is made out of several puzzle pieces all interlocking together. And the reason why they're all interlocking together is that all of those things affect the success of your online learning initiative. We're going to start with leadership and vision because it's leadership and vision that I think is the most important. You will note, at least there is a saying that says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So if you don't have a clear vision, and Dr. Dowden uh, referenced this as well, if you don't have a clear vision, there's no place good for you to go. So the vision for online learning has to be unifying. In other words, it has to bring your campus or your university, your institution together. It should be strongly linked to and supportive of the institutional vision. It needs to be appropriate to your target audience because you are going to have to repeat that vision over and over again to internal stakeholders, to faculty, to students. So you have to be able to do that clearly and clearly communicate your vision to all of your stakeholders. So now that you've figured out what the vision is, or at least what it should be, you have to start planning. It's time to put the pedal to the metal and ask these pertinent questions. Because a successful online learning initiative requires that you make good business decisions as well as sound academic decisions. Both of those have to be intertwined. So let's start with the business decisions because I am assuming that you want your initiative to make money as well as serve your clients who are the students. So here are some key questions that you need to ask. Who is your target customer? Is it undergraduate students? Is it graduate students? Is it people looking for professional development courses? What is their ethnicity? What's their age group? The more you know about your target market, the better you're able to serve them. So you need to know who they are. What problems are you solving for them? We are educational institutions. So this will often be a training solution. So you're going to be providing courses, you're going to be providing programs. But what is the issue that you're solving for them? 
Do they want more flexibility? Do they want different courses? What problem are you solving for them? And what are your solutions? What is your unique value proposition? What is special about you, your department, that you will be able to offer to your target customer? Why should they take courses with you? You must understand these things in order for you to be successful. And many of these questions can be answered by market research, whether that's paid research or research that you do. So now you've answered the basic questions, it's time to plan the actions that you will actually take. How will you generate leads? How are you gonna market your product, your courses to your students? And once you get them interested, how are you gonna convert those leads into just being interested? And I think Olivine mentioned this, you can have lots of people interested, but how many of them are gonna be converted into actual paying registered students? So you have to think about that. How are you gonna do that? And once you have them into the, into the program, how are you gonna retain them? This often has to do with how much support you provide and the quality of the instruction that you're providing. Now, once you've gotten through that part, you need to think about the key resources you're gonna need. How much money is it gonna cost you? Who do you need to partnership, partner with? Is that, are those partners within your institution? Are they external partners? Dr. Dowden talked about both because his entity supports all of his colleges in his, uh, in his organization. And then you have to think about your revenue streams. Where is your revenue stream coming from? Is it just going to be the student? Is it gonna be student and government? Are you going to do other things that are gonna make you money? But you need to understand what your strategies are in order to make this successful for you. One of the key questions you're gonna to have to be asking is about your curriculum. Now you can have a red ocean strategy or a blue ocean strategy. If you're doing red ocean strategy, that means you're competing with other people who are already in the market doing something very similar to you. If you're using a blue ocean strategy, you are thinking up some wonderful new innovative programs or courses that nobody else is doing. And this is like Airbnb or Uber when they first started. So they were in uncontested market space because nobody was doing that and it made the competition irrelevant. Now, since then, other entities have started like Lyft and other people, but if you can be the first in that market, you have a guaranteed advantage. If you are going to be doing the Red Ocean strategy, you're competing, so that means you have to be offering something that's different or better so that students would wanna to come to you. Your programs and your courses should be responsive to the needs of your target market, whether they're the students or the businesses that are gonna employ the students that you have. The curriculum should be derived from your institutional strengths. So what is it that your department or institution does really well? And you need to be supporting students in getting relevant jobs. So whatever course or program you have, it should be aligned with what the industry needs are so that when the student finishes, they can get a job or that they can create jobs for others by becoming entrepreneurs. But the skills and knowledge that you're teaching them must enable them to do that. The next piece we wanna look at is faculty support. And this is critical. I know that a lot of you in here today are faculty, so I'm sure that you would appreciate this. If, you're into, if your initiative is gonna be successful, you must provide resources and mechanisms to support your faculty. That could be training, that could be often in, in this particular space, instructional design support, multimedia support. This could be training them to do it or providing persons who will help them to do it. The training can be done in a number of different ways, whether it's self-serving, self-serve, sorry, or whether it's facilitated courses, just-in-time videos, lots of ways to do it, but it has to be done in a way that faculty find it easy to access, that it's enjoyable, and that they come out with knowledge and skills that they find valuable. Another way to support them is to recognize online work. A lot of us are in institutions in the region that online learning and online courses and the work that it takes to do that is not as well recognized as it should be. But if you want your faculty to buy in eagerly and do great work, you're going to have to figure out a way to recognize that work, whether that's by uh, remuneration. Some of us can afford that, some of us not so much. 
Is that going to be by time release? So they get a, a course release where they work on their online courses and prepare them. And how is their online work tied to promotion and tenure? If you can tie it to those things, then you have a much higher chance of getting them to work on it. So you've got to support your faculty. And this one is probably obvious to most of us. You have to support your students. If you want them to have the best possible online learning experience, then you have to provide scaffolding for them. And I've listed a number of areas here that you would want to provide scaffolding in. The key thing is that they should be able to access at least the same level of support in their online program that they can access if they're coming to the campus face-to-face. -face. So whether that's course orientation, technical support, academic career advisement, especially in these days, mental health support, financial aid, disability services, all of these things. The more support you can provide to them, the more likely they are to be successful, and then they'll, the, your graduation rates will be high, your students will advertise for you because they would have had a great experience and therefore they're gonna tell other people, you should go to this place, this was a great experience. So make sure that you're su supporting them because they are our key target market, those are our clients and we need to look after them. Another thing that you're gonna need to think about is the organizational culture and the organizational structure. As you know, technology changes very rapidly. So you want your initiative to be structured in such a way that it is agile in decision-making and agile in action. So you would like to create a flat structure with not too much oversight in either direction. Every position that you create should be linked in some way to the business operation of the entity. In other words, it should be clear how each position in the organization helps the organization to make money and to accomplish its objective. The structure should ensure that it is supportive of the business activities and should allow for key growth over time. The other thing you really want to think carefully about is the culture. There's a saying uh, attributed to Drucker, Peter Drucker, that culture eats strategy for breakfast. And basically what that means is you can have the best strategy, well thought out, well planned, but if the culture of your organization does not support that strategy, that strategy is gonna be largely ineffective. So you have to think about who you're hiring. Do they have a growth mindset? Are they interested in innovation? Can they work as a team? Can they work solo? You need to think carefully about who you're hiring, what position you're put, what positions you're putting them in, and what is the culture that you are trying to achieve in this team where you're creating this online entity. Some of these things may seem simple, but they make a huge difference to how successful your entity is going to be. Quality. Dr. Dowden was talking about quality. He mentioned quality matters. Um, quality Matters is very popular in the United States, and it's a good framework. They mostly focus on course, um, course rubrics. Quality is the one concept that undergirds all the other components that I've been talking about today. So you need to be quali establishing quality metrics in each area of your program, and they should be integrated into your workflow. Quality should not be an add-on at the end where you're like, oh, we need to check to see if it's good quality. No. You should be integrating it into the workflow. We have two examples here, Quality Matters that I just mentioned, and also the Online Learning Consortium's Quality Scorecard. I actually prefer this one, the Quality Scorecard, and the reason is because it looks at aspects of online quality that Quality Matters does not look at. For example, the administration of online programs and online student support. Those are key pieces in the initiative, the overall institutional initiative that need to be looked at as well as what Quality Matters looks at, which is more the course design and the actual instruction. And the key piece, especially if you are in the Caribbean region or some regions of Africa as well, is that Quality Matters costs a considerable amount of money, at least in our relative <laughs> economies, and uh, the online learning consortium rubric can be accessible for free. So all of these are considerations that we would have to take into account.
Governance is also an important piece. How is your entity going to be governed? You have to have policies in place to guide the implementation and to ensure that the product that you are creating is of the highest quality. You want to identify ways to ensure compliance and make sure that everybody's voice is heard and that your policies are strong and address the things that need to be addressed. <laughs>